Another, so this is the Nissan engine. What is it? Yeah, yeah. Nissan RB30. Yeah, yeah, RB30. Yeah. So yeah. one of the best engines Holden yeah. ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. Turbo bench just to prove it. Well, welcome to a new Dave's Classic Garage Tours video and a visit to Mix Custom Restorations. It's a long time coming. Should have been another car before this. Hint, hint, Raz. Get on with that beautiful Alpha 105 that Mick delivered to you. But as you'll find out, Mick's a brilliant bloke and an equally brilliant painter. All right there, Mick, how are you doing? What's happening, Dave? Well, this job's uh, finally done, eh? Yeah, bloody oath. Tell us what it is. So we've got a VL Holden. This is a Nitron variant. Um, owner's had it since, I think it was his first car. So 1999. Yeah, awesome story, yeah? yeah? Awesome story. And then um, always knew that he wanted to do something like this to it. Yeah. And then we were lucky enough really to get the job. So we got to do the full like body and paint, every nut and bolt, engine bay, boot, all painted, uh -huh. as you can see. So did it stay in his ownership all that time or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So since he's had it, he he's, hasn't got rid of it. Right. And I always say, I don't know what made you keep it for as long as you did. Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of people end up selling cars sure. and regret them. But he managed to actually hold on to this one. So tell us a little bit, yeah, I mean, it's quite special in the way it's a, a turbo, it's a v, v, yeah. a, VL. VL. Yeah. Okay. So it's a RB30 turbo. And so this a, is the, um, the, the Nissan engine, what is it? Yeah, yeah. Nissan RB30. Yeah, yeah, RB30. Yeah. So yeah. one of the best engines Holden yeah. ever made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Turbo bench, just to prove it. Let's delve a little further, shall we? New Holden Commodore. Okay, so the VL Commodore with its slimline lights up front was produced between 1986 and 88. The luxury Calais models spice things up with semi-retracting headlight shrouds. But the rest of the lineup, including the mad as hell looking SS Group A SV with its TWR body kit, made do with putting all the glass on display all the time. The Nissan connection came about because from January 1st, 1986, all cars manufactured in Australia had to run on unleaded 91 octane fuel and Holden didn't have anything to suit. So the Japanese in the form of Nissan came to the rescue and in so doing, and despite a backlash, went on to create one of the most iconic Australian cars of all time. And it's this variant, the limited edition HDT VL Commodore Nitron Pack, produced in conjunction with Peter Brock's Holden dealer team, specifically for country Victorian dealerships, that is the rarest of all the variants. All in brigade red, with grey cloth trim, five-speed manual transmission, sports suspension, a colour-coded body kit, 15-inch HDD aero wheels, and a Momo steering wheel were also fitted. And every Nitron came with Peter Brock's controversial energy polarizer. Check that out if you want a mad automotive story. But mate, well, there ain't gonna be many looking like this though, I'd imagine out there. Nah, thanks to Dave. Like, oh, a few nice ones. So a mix, uh, I have got another project. I've met Mick a long, 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 long ago on another project that I'd have put some images up on uh, Instagram about a year ago of, a, uh, of an Alpha 105, a job, but um, that's uh, sadly you still be not, uh, not built up yet, although we still keep on having a go at uh, Raz, the owner. <laughs> um, so we, I did do a deep dive with and followed that build with, um, uh, or the, the Mick, with Mick to uh, all the processes that he went through that we will put out one day um, once uh, Raz gets to work on putting it all back together. That's it. That's um, a big kick up the ass for Orazio, so yeah, make sure yeah, he listens. Yeah. We better get into that shed of his. Yeah, this one's the one that uh, came in after. It's a, um, yeah, for you know, a worldwide audience, it's going to be something that they're just not familiar with and even people back in Europe with the um, you know would recognize a sort of a, a senator or Carlton sort of shape but they certainly wouldn't recognize these uh, these headlights here from uh, the later variants in the Commodore um, well do you say the 89 this one 
86? 86, yeah. He's got a Charles, second. 86 or 87? 87. Right, yeah, yeah. But um, just tell us a bit about your processes, Mick, because uh, no other bleed is going to this uh, length as far as I can. Well, oh, no, thanks, Dave. Of there's a few of us. There's yeah, a few of us yeah, sick are. bastards that are hooked on just the obsession of just trying to push the envelope and... You just try, it's just the pride. You end up just, um, you do it more for your own ego almost of right. being able to do it than anything else and just for the betterment of the car, really. Yeah. So basically, like, we got it in, gets all stripped down, gets onto the rotisserie, and then from there, inside and out, like, we had to dry ice all the floors because all the factory body dead enough. Yeah. Basically stripped everything down to a bare substrate. Yeah. So that we know that every little bit of everything over the years is there to be seen. There is yeah. no more secrets. We evaluate where all our panels are sitting. Once like we once we really have everything stripped down, we get it into epoxy as soon as possible. So second that it gets caught, cool, I get the call from the blaster saying it's in bare metal. Within four hours we make sure it's coated in the shop in epoxy. Because you've right. only got like a four hour window. Yeah. Really. And, Before um, the degradation of the, yeah, the metal. Oxidization. Oxidization, yeah. Oxidisation. Yeah. So we try and not get, not try, we do. That's the biggest, probably yeah. important thing of the job. Every single job, whether it's the step nose that you see behind us or the ballet or the Chevy you see here. Every time we get a car in, it's the most stressful part of the build. Just making sure that everything's covered up. Yeah. And then when we go and get all our, all our epoxy on, then we're safe to start really getting into the meat of it. So this one was the parcel shelf, um, all the windscreen surrounds, all the boot lips, um, lower quarters, lower seals. Yeah. And then from there, it's little things like this where, you know, we take a lot of pride in. We do the same with all the cars, but it's just making sure that like everything shuts on its own. Wow. So, you know, like I say, we've uh, both um, we followed the Alpha 105. We've got this one now. What's uh, what's been the easiest car to work on? Good question. I know Holden, Holden fanboys will hate me, and I love Holdens, but I'm not going to lie. We had, we had an absolute prick of a time when it came to the doors on the VL. So the doors on the VL are actually they just hinge pins, basically. One at the top of the door, one yeah, at the bottom yeah. of the door. When on the VL. Got, yeah, VL, yeah. VKs are the same, I yeah. think. I think right the way through, even back to Tirana's. Yeah. Um, and like, you're coming from you know, predominantly doing European, doing alphas, where you've got hinges that you can play with and move cars right, around. I got you. When you've got a fixed point here, yeah. they're so much more fussy right. when it comes to trying to get right. So um, we had guards that were hitting ends of doors on yes. this car. So then you normally on a conventional car that you can, you know, move a hinge out or whatnot, you can't on this, everything's fixed. Yeah. So then the So each one of those, set the hinge on the alpha's got four screw points or whatever yeah. they're all got a little bit of movement everything's got a little bit of movement the um chev's the same everything's yeah. got a bit of movement right whereas these to get i know it might not look look like oh. much but when you've got like a when you've got a door that yeah. you can actually get to talk cool. to you like that yeah so you'll see if you look through here yeah oh, you'll see like a black transition there. all right two pins, pins, yeah, just pins aren't they? yeah yeah so you can imagine it's trying to yeah. trying to move them ever so slightly to make it look like the door was yeah. beautifully just put onto the car. Yeah. I struggled a lot more with the VL than I did the Alpha. Wow. I think every wow. time it, it just involved a lot more labour. Right. But when it comes to, I just think we see the cars that you, you we've done that we're built like built in the 60s or the 50s. Yeah, yeah. Everything's just, I think, for lack of a better word, meatier. Yes. Yeah. And so playing with. 80s it was almost like the discovery of like modern technologies and that in-between phase of like the archaic forms of the yeah. 50s 60s and then it's starting to transition into like the roaring eras of like the 90s with engineering right. and i think but one thing that i just didn't like yeah. was the pins and okay. i had many a conversation with the owner about the car yeah. where i just said i'm like mate it would be so much easier if they were just bolted in yeah. and they had a bit of a movement but the good thing, I guess, not everything is just shit and negativity. When they're set properly and you get them out, you can get them in to back to the same spot really easily. Right. It's just if they're really far out like this car was, yeah. where doors weren't shutting, 
yeah. and the tops of doors were crossing over the pillar. Like, it was a nightmare. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think getting it to this point where you see it now, it's yeah. definitely... Um, yeah, we'll send you through the photos so you can have a look at what yeah, it was yeah, like we'll before. Yeah, we'll a few of them out. And um, every nut and bolt we send off to zinc plate and then yeah. we'll show you in the engine bay. And yeah. So you can see like all that gap work. Yeah, it's going to say your gap. I mean, they didn't come out. Where was this? Port Elizabeth or down in Melbourne? That it was. Uh, oh, you know what? I actually don't know where this one came yeah. from. This is uh, right-hand man, Charlie. Yeah. The reason nothing uh, uh, nothing gets past Charlie. Nothing gets past Charlie. Yeah. All right, so I'm just careful every time we um, yeah, do, and you'll see why. Oh but like, God. have a look at all that. Yeah. So, uh, right. Yeah. Everything's fresh. Beautiful. Make sure nothing's hitting. Everything's in right. Tags restored. Are these tags. so yeah. Shape wise, not all this sort of thing, every screw's the same from would they be or no, nah, they're actually all a bit different, right? So, if you pay attention, they'll use different heads, yeah, on the sides of the guards as compared to the nose cone, right? And that's how they were from the factory, yeah, no, how they, it was from the factory, yeah, from yeah, the factory, yeah, yeah. you'd think it would all be the same, right? But it's not. Yeah, yeah, okay. But my gosh, look at that, where's not many uh engine bays look like that. So we just try and like get all that sort of Raptor liner in the transition between yes. the Raptor and the paint, just so it's not messy. That's all fine line taped. Yeah. Um, so that that level of detail ain't factory though, is it? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's mixed uh, custom restoration level. So we yeah. like ev everything underneath is new, and then um, same with the same with the steering rack. Everything's been done. So every all the underneath components got blasted, yeah. all in satin black. And then yeah. every bush done. Um, yeah, pretty much everything that came out of the car, including all of the mechanisms and doors, all of them got re-greased. Yeah. So tell me about the work that goes into being able to get those uh, panels like that. So like basically, the hardest thing is just knowing that it can be overwhelming. You can like it can be overwhelming from the start, where yeah. you'll know that you you've got so much work. Like we had when this came to us, I had an aftermarket cowl that didn't fit. Right. Like you could fit your hands through the bonnet around the back here. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can get a bit overwhelmed and looking at the car and going, "Holy shit, where do I start?" But you basically know. For us, we know there's, you've always got the fixed panels at the back right quarters, so we start from our fixed panels. Okay. We then work up and around the car. Yeah. And then we'll go doors, get our doors aligned right, yeah. go up the front door, into yeah. the guard, and around. So then you'll basically know that everything is, like we use four and a half mil as our sort of, our um, average for our gap work. So all of our cars, I just, that's how we gap them. Right, okay. And we just make sure that any gaps that are bigger than four and a half mil, we'll get the TIG out and we'll wind, like, weld up all of our um, excess shape. Yeah. And then any ones that are smaller than four and a half, we'll grind them back out. And then if we need to re-weld them, we will. Yeah. And then that's exactly what we did with the bonnet and exactly what we did with the doors. Same with the boot. So. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, where, where is this uh, fastidious approach born out of buddy because you we've talked in the past yes you know yes you're a car man but it, you you talked about other things being your passion you know shape and yeah, form and, yeah. and whatever what? i think that's like i have this conversation every day yeah. and like i think about it all the time where every car you look at and you always think you could do it better than the last yeah so i think Every car that comes out, you don't get you don't get that ego behind you where you think, oh, this is absolutely perfect because I've never had a perfect paint job. Right. But you, it's that imperfection that I think drives you into being so, you know, relentless into trying to make your craft as good as it can. Yeah. Where you can actually like hand the key over to the to your customer, to, and that like they put so much trust into you doing a pride and joy. Yeah. And just to be able to look at them in the eyes and actually go, I've actually given it my all. Right. That's, I think, the biggest thing for me. Sure. Like sure. that motivation of just making sure that you haven't left any stone unturned and yeah. you didn't let like laziness 
anything to do with like poor craftsmanship, laziness, anything that could have been better that you just left because you were, you know, stuck for time or couldn't be asked. Yeah. It's all things that I look at as like, you know, it's like weakness where I'm like, I tell myself like, don't be piss weak. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. had a big day, but just keep going, keep pushing, keep striving. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, do better, basically. Yeah, sure, sure. Hours wise, what are we talking, you reckon? 1,050. 1,050, yeah? All yeah. Right, okay. So, pretty full on. Is that what you were thinking when you started the project, or? Uh, I, think, I think that's the biggest thing with everyone in the trade. It always comes in, and you always think it's going to be easier than it is. Yeah. We're getting better at sort of having a gauge, but... Yeah. I think for everyone like watching from home, um, if you're getting a car restored, don't expect to get an exact quote until you have like a better understanding of it when it's in bare steel. Yeah. Quoting cars from photos or with paint on, we've seen so many horror stories. And you know what? You could, we've got this as the, oh, the on old, the wall. The old 500. This is the old Fiat 500. Oh my God, yeah. This, this looks great, this car, yeah, before we pulled it down. And all of this... Fooled you, didn't it? Oh, it fooled me. <laughs> fooled me. That was all bogged up, sculpted. Looked really good, too. Yeah. And um, that's right, just uh, my... That's a memory, I think. Yeah. It just tells me every day that you really don't know what's underneath no, the paint. No. Was there anything at all in the, you know, hiding underneath this one, or you kept it? No, nah, look, really. This one was pretty good. Yeah. Um, it had a, had a previous pretty poor paint job right okay so there was a lot of rust that was just bogged up yeah but you sort of expect something along the lines from a car that's yeah you know we understand that not all cars are going to come to this point and come to us straight away yeah so something that's on this car that we did a bit differently um if you have if people know vl's like we actually molded the hct glass onto the plastic bar right so I don't know, when we saw it and it came in, it was just little things like that where we did the same with um, the seals right round, where I didn't want to see a gap. Yeah. And I didn't want to see it full on moulded either. I just wanted it to be really neatly just joined. Yeah. So we actually went through and pretty much moulded everything. So it makes it look really flush. And then all these plastic, like the plastic, um, I guess, shapes that you see in the bars yeah they didn't really line up that well so we sat there and filed it back almost like metal you know surfaced right. the plastic to um get it all to talk to each other and run into each other okay and there was just little things like that on this car i think every little piece of plastic to make it line so up so when you say so mailed it you've gone along with like a a, a, a plastic welder or no nah, so like you can use different you can use different like adhesives, basically. Right, okay. Find the adhesive that suits the application the best for you. Um, but how are you doing testing on stuff that you... Yeah, so we actually called 3M and got 3M to come out and give oh, us some right. instruction as to the best way that we could do this because yeah. we don't want to put something on someone's car and then not be sure. Exactly, yeah, yeah. So we went through a, like a learning day with 3M to actually figure out what's the best way to do it. Yeah. That was awesome. Like, will yeah. you do it more in the future? Because yeah. they just came out more Unreal. than happy to to get involved on that kind yeah, of thing right yeah. okay so they helped us out how to shitload so matt at yeah. 3m massive thanks because um he came out and helped us navigate how to do it properly yeah and um no, it looks so much it looks like holden did them like that yeah so yeah sure it looks a lot better how many were, were there are these made do you know i think there was 150 oh nathan will tell me 152 Thereabouts, right, okay. and then of the manual variant, and I think turbo variant, it was around fifty odd. Right, so very, very. So cute. not many for a VL. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Do we know what sort of uh, numbers are left? No. Wouldn't I? Couldn't imagine. The, I couldn't imagine there'd be too many. No, no I think, should imagine with that engine, that power, and the kind of ownership that he'd have had back in the day. It wasn't, I don't think people were too like, careful with them. No, no. I okay. always, I always say that now with, um, with the owner, I always say, I'm like, just please don't, you can do whatever you want with it, it's your car, but yeah. I'm like, just treat it well, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there would have been a few of these that were, um, yeah, back in the day, they were wrapped around poles, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. 
So this is ready. This is done. This is yeah, off just to... basically put put our molds on. Yeah. Just last minute, we leave the molds off so we can polish the doors a lot easier. Yeah. Give it one last polish on, you know, before it goes out, and then badge it. Last few badges that are on there. Okay. Then badge it. It's, and that's then it's off to have the engine dropped in. Yeah. Engine, that's been rebuilt. Yeah. Engine trans. Uh, yeah, completely built motor. Um, and the trimming. You, like we did everything with even the fuel fuel tank. Like we've made sure that that was surfaced the same way the outside of the car was oh, surfaced. And, oh, unbelievable. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'll come down here. Well, we've got some other uh, shots that you'd have taken. Charlie's been taken as well over the course of the build. Yeah, I'll we'll be throwing in. show them all. Yeah. My God, yes, I can see. Beautiful, mate. Beautiful. Unreal. It's always when you get to this end of the job where you put so much of yourself in every job. Like when you put so much of yourself in every job and you're just trying to make sure that like, when I see this car in 10 years time, I know that like, hey, I did it. Yeah. And more like, I think that's the biggest thing is just knowing that every car is a, is a signature. Really. Yeah. It's like a walking, it's a moving billboard. Absolutely. That represents Absolutely. who you are. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's the thing that we're most proud of, like every time we do a job where, you know, no stir stone left unturned, just keep sure. on pushing, you know? Sure. So predominantly, like, we just focus on as a, a paint shop, not yeah. a full blown metal fabrication shop. You can't shop. help with the panel gaps, I think. I like, I like gapping <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I think that's where I, Yeah. I think that's the extent of my metal work that I like doing. I like, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do a patch panel, like, you know, you'll hammer and dolly a bit of shape back into something, but I'll leave it for the real craftsmen, yeah. you know, of yeah. uh, red, like shaping quarters and right. building stuff from scratch. That's yeah. not in my pay grade, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Different kinds of work, whether it be 60s Italian coupes, American 50s coupe, <laughs> or, uh, you know, Aussie 80s, uh, you're pretty much taking on, you know, you're not frightened of taking on any kind of car and. I always joke with Charlie, if it wasn't for cars, I'd be painting pianos. Right. Just because I like pianos. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I like yeah. painting. When you, used to, when you see, like, those grand pianos as a kid that were just, you know, black, they look so oil-rich yeah, and they sure, look just sure. like chrome. I remember well, that was what was appealing for me. Like I say, you have always said you can swim in your paint, mate. Definitely <laughs> unbelievable. Absolutely I think that's what I try swimming. doing with the cars. I try. That's pretty much, like, what I try and do, just try and turn every car into like that piano look that I yeah. saw as a kid that I always used to be like, how did it get there? Yeah. And um, yeah, that's sort of what keeps yeah. me going on it. Great stuff, mate. All right, well, yeah, certainly uh, have a pleased owner and uh, hopefully it gets, your work gets seen. It doesn't get shoved in a, um, <laughs> in a collection. It gets nah. seen out and about. Hey, whatever happens, we just, mate, we're just stoked to be able to do it. That's why you do anything. Like, yeah. Whether it's Holden or Chev or Alpha, yeah, every car's got its uniqueness to it, Absolutely. and I think just um, you learn the commonalities of what makes a car great, yeah. and it's like synergy with, with every panel where yeah. we talk about like that synergy of making every panel talk to each other, every gap talk to each other, that continuity, cool. like whether it's a Merc or whether it's an Alpha or whether yeah. it's a Bentley or whether it's a Toyota, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Like cars look best when everything's surface sure. correctly gapped up nice you yeah. actually sit there and you know put helps when you put yeah. good quality paint on it or maybe even a ferrari 275 eh? Hint oh it. i tell you what if someone's listening with a ferrari 275 <laughs> and you're trying to pick out a shop whether it comes to you'd be silly to walk past <laughs> the best in uh we're not in heidelberg west i learned this from another blog the best in heidelberg west we're just uh i don't know what's the best in coburg north yeah. it doesn't have the same yeah. twang to it <laughs> But right, if buddy. someone's listening with a 275 Ferrari, yeah. be sure to hit us up. Definitely, definitely. But, hey, at the end of the day, whether it's a 275 Ferrari or a VL, yeah. they all got to make sure that it look as good as the next one. Like. Absolutely, buddy. All right, mate. Well, thank you very much for your time. And, uh, yeah, hopefully one day we'll get Raz's um, Alpha 105 because people, you have got to see that... Uh, that finished as well. We've got to see it finished. No, nah, it's going to be it. bloody good. I yeah. want to see it finished. I think we all do. Yeah, absolutely. I think we all do. I think all we've right. got a few more jobs that are going to be just like, you know, really good for the shop and yeah. proud to be, like, put our name on and 
Mate, we're pumped. Pumped for what's to come. Great stuff. So um, thanks, Dave. Thanks nice for coming one. out. Cheers. As ever, thanks for watching. And if you did enjoy it, please consider liking, adding a comment, subscribing, and sharing my content. It really does make a difference, and best of all, it's absolutely free.